Another talk that I went to that was pretty cool was this, on this object called Ada Carina, which is uh, a, um, a, a really massive star that in about 1840 had this tremendous eruption that you see here and here. Uh, they call this the Humunculus uh, Nebula. And in this eruption, it shed about 10 solar masses of material. We have no idea how this particular how a star would actually do that. It turns out it's a binary star in there, one of them being, we estimate, about 90 times the mass of the sun and the other one about 30 times the mass of the sun, both very, very massive uh, objects, uh, orbiting around one another every five years, putting out as much light as five million suns from this particular area here. So. It's, a, it's the only object that we have known about that looks like this. And we have, uh, as far as we know, only one in our Milky Way galaxy. So the search was on to find more of these objects because massive stars are very important in the kind of the chemical evolution of our, our, our galaxy. So what they did is they did a, a search. They found that, that these Eta Carina-like objects have a very characteristic uh, signature. Uh, between their differences between the infrared, which is what's measured by Spitzer, and that of a uh, Hubble. In particular, they're much brighter than the infrared. So they got a, like a spectral fingerprint. And so, and you can see in all these images, and these are the five uh, new Eta Carina like stars that they found in their survey. Um, uh, that they're all relatively faint here in the visible part of the spectrum and they're pretty booming bright in the infrared part of the spectrum. That's because they've shed a bunch of dust and stuff and that dust is then warmed and it shows up in the infrared part of the spectrum. So it was very neat because the, the earlier studies and looking at some other galaxies, they haven't turned up any of these and they were sensitive enough to do it. And then they started looking at some of the more star forming region galaxies like M83 here. And in this one, they actually found two that met the Eta twin like uh, signatures. So um, they are indeed very, very rare. I mean, it, chances are there's not even one in a galaxy. And it's kind of interesting that we do have one. And it's a very, I mean, it's a very interesting uh, object. One of my uh, professors in graduate school, this is his baby and, and everything like that. He was actually at the meeting and everything, but he didn't come actually to this talk. So I had to fill him in on, on that on that one. Okay, I had just, uh, you know, since I didn't have a lot of pretty pictures here, I thought I'd show a really cool image here uh, that was released actually in December by the Hubble Space Telescope. And this is like one of the best uh, images I've ever seen of a new of a star being born down here in the core there's a there is a uh, a newborn star it's collecting material it's forming a disk and when it does that it heats up and everything and the only path for the 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 material and radiation to escape is along these jets these bipolar flows here and it's just extraordinary how collimated these jets are out of this particular object here. And um, like a, a, this is just artist conception. So what's happening is you've got this disk around it and any of the uh, uh, light that wants to escape along the disk is basically just obscured there. So it really just comes out at these poles. And this is the rotation axis of the disk around that star, the, the same disk at which planets will ultimately form. This is a young star forming region. Hubble created this nice little movie here that zooms in. It's a Ryan B cloud. This is the Ryan Nebula right down here, but you're going to zoom in over here. And there's so much three-dimensionality to that uh, particular object there uh, that, uh, you know, at the end of this, you'll see that they'll actually do a little artistic license and, and do a little rotating 3D rotation around it, which you can really see in the image, but it kind of brings it uh, to life. Now, I don't know if it was just coincidence or not, but the reason they released this in December is this. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it really looked like The Force Awakens. Uh, and in particular, if you've seen the movie, the devil-edged uh, uh, lightsaber and everything. So anyway, that's actually all I have for you. So I will... Uh, 
uh, entertain questions at the end, and I'll turn it over to Steve. Thanks.